there guys what's up and welcome back to the smalletics channel i am so excited about this video and that's because this is something that i have wanted to create for you guys for so long i can think back two years ago when i started smalletics and i envisioned myself creating this exact video so it's kind of a cool moment for me and hopefully it will be really interesting and useful and educational for you and you don't even know what i'm talking about yet I have officially begun a 12 week fitness challenge for myself and I've decided that I want to document the entire process from before all the way through the end, everything in between, the ups and the downs, what I'm eating, what I'm working out, how much cardio I'm doing, like every little thing, how I'm tracking progress and we're today gonna kick it off. I'm gonna chat with you guys, tell you what my goals for this challenge are. I am going to tell you what my program looks like, the program design, the approach I'm taking, and I'm also gonna share with you how I'm tracking progress, and I'm gonna do my official before check-in with you guys. This is a matcha-worthy video. Okay, so before we start, I do wanna say this challenge is for myself. I'm not doing it for anyone. While I am filming it and recording it and I will be blogging about it, I want you guys to know that first and foremost, I'm doing it for myself and to make myself happy and not really for any other reason. Um, for that reason, if you do want to do this along with me, what you can do is you can download my free workout plan that's in my guide and get great results from that while you watch these videos. That's just an option for you if you get inspired and you're like, I wanna do a program. I do have a free one week program that you can download. I'll put it in the description below. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what I've been doing the last six to 12 months. Basically, the last bit of time, I'd say this last year, I have been really focused on you guys and my business and growing Smalletics and giving my clients everything I can. And I've been fortunate and lucky enough to have made a lot of amazing changes in the business this year that have allowed me to have more free time. I've hired help. I have um, coaches in the program now, registered dietitian that can help with coaching and check-in. So I'm now able to focus on content more and especially get back into, you know, my own fitness and the things that I love to do. The reason why I started this channel in the first place. Because the last year was so business and work focused for me, I just focused on maintaining and doing my workouts for my mental health, for my physical health, um, and just as a part of my daily routine. And so what that looked like was I was working out four to five times per week and I wasn't so concerned with making gains or losing weight or anything like that. I basically just wanted to maintain. I felt really happy. I stopped tracking macros last summer and even over the summer and spring, I was very loose with it, but I completely threw my fitness pal out the window and just decided to eat kind of intuitively. And I just hadn't visited intuitive eating in a really long time. So it was really new for me. I mean, it had been two years since I hadn't tracked. So it was a really new thing for me to just kind of eat what I like and start listening to my hunger. And I learned a lot from that process and I ate dessert like every night and I didn't gain weight. So when we get to my before check-in, you'll see that I maintained about 120 or 100, anywhere between 119, 122 pounds, didn't gain weight. And I was eating about 17 to 1900 calories per day. And it was really fine. Um, I learned a lot about my hunger and I ate when I was hungry. I didn't worry so much about um, restricting in any way, but I still kept high protein my priority. So I still had about 30 grams of protein at every meal. I still had three to four meals per day. So I was still above 100 grams of protein per day, which comes out to about a pound, sorry, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And that's always been what I stick to when I'm trying to maintain my muscle or build muscle. So what's happened to me over this year is I've just sort of gotten to this point where I love fitness, it's my passion, but I haven't had time to be inspired by it in my own journey in a long time. I forget what it feels like to really work towards a goal, to have that dedication, to be committed, and it started to just kind of seep into my life. I started waking up a little bit later. I would check my phone first thing in the morning. I just noticed my routines kind of becoming not as enjoyable. I didn't feel as inspired. Even in the content I create for you guys, I was less inspired because I wasn't doing as much health stuff for myself. Of course, I was still doing a really great baseline and I, I will always work out and eat well, but I just wasn't inspired, right? I wasn't pursuing a goal and I'm very goal oriented. So 
when I don't have goals, it's just hard for me to feel motivated or excited. And I just got to this point, this has been like creeping up on me. Like I've been having this itch to do this since probably September and now feels like the right time. And I know it's a weird time because it's like December and you're like, girl, what are you doing starting a fitness challenge on Christmas? I don't know, but it feels right. So I'm just gonna trust it. I want to talk about my goals. I have very specific goals and that's also really, really good place for you to start. If you have a, a goal for yourself, make sure it's specific and it's written down somewhere. Not a huge secret. Another reason why I'm sharing with you is because I know if I tell you, I'm going to get better results because I'm going to be holding myself accountable through you guys. Okay, so my first goal for this challenge is to get a lot stronger. For the last year, I've been working out in my apartment gym downstairs and I do pay a gym membership for it. Um, it's not a lot, but they have the basics, you know? They have dumbbells and a Smith machine, which I don't even use. They have, you know, a couple benches. They have a cable machine, which I've been very reliant on this year, but there's no Olympic size barbell. Now, do you need that if you're just starting out? Absolutely not, you're good with free weights, but someone like me who's been lifting for many years, I do lift barbells. I lift a lot heavier than I did when I started, so if I wanna progress, I can't really go back to dumbbells for my primary lifts, deadlift, bench press, overhead press, chest press, squat. I have to have a barbell. So I've been maintaining at um, lower, much lower weights for my all my primary lifts than I would like and using this mini barbell it's like 25 pounds it's not the same circumference as a regular Olympic size barbell and the the length of it is shorter so in terms of like just physics lifting it actually is mechanically harder than an Olympic size barbell like last time I went and used an Olympic size barbell was in Pittsburgh I actually filmed this workout and put it on my Instagram um, and I lift my deadlift was I think 155 for six to eight reps and when I'm home and I load this mini barbell with the same amount of weight I can't I mean I can lift it but it's very uncomfortable I don't have a good grip so needless to say I haven't had great workout situation but that was my own choice and it was the easiest thing to do and it kept me you know in my groove and maintaining so it's fine but I'm ready to upgrade and really start getting stronger on my lifts so my number one goal with this challenge is to get a heck of a lot stronger I want to um, I want to get my bench press, my overhead press much higher than it is. My deadlift is probably 155. My squats probably like 135. I basically stopped squatting for a while and just did squat variations. Um, I did a lot of front bar squatting, which is you can lift a lot less with the front bar than you can with the back squat or, or front squat versus back squat. So um, I would say it's probably 135 with a high bar. One of my goals is to switch to low bar squatting. And the reason why is because a low bar squat, which just means that the barbell sits a little bit lower on your back, um, it, it targets your posterior chain, which is your hamstrings and your glutes more than your quads. And because I'm quad dominant, I've been doing high bar squat my whole life and I'm really darn good at it. I'm ready to be challenged, switch my squat over to one that I'm less familiar with, actually I have like very little experience with and uh, master that and start to engage my hamstrings more in my squat. So that first goal is I wanna get stronger. Secondly, I wanna get lean again. I'm already lean, I'm about 17% body fat. We'll go over all my stats in the before check-in. I wanna be challenged. Like I said, I wanna have fun again. I wanna get really into it and just feel like I can you know, access all of the clothes in my closet, even like the tighter ones that I haven't worn in a while and just kind of feel good and you know, just feel better in my body. So my goal is to get down to 115 pounds. However, this is a secondary goal. If I reach 118 or 117 and I feel great, then I'm not gonna worry about it. But I, in the past, when I have done challenges like this for myself, getting to 115 is a really good sweet spot for me. I just know this about myself. I feel so strong, so powerful, lean, healthy. So we're building muscle, we're burning fat. Switching to my low bar squat and mentally I want to be challenged again. I also want to focus on this structure. Like I said, I just haven't been inspired. So this is really about just becoming, um, you know, inspired again and falling in love with this, this um, fitness lifestyle again. And it's already had such positive effects on my mindset. I started yesterday and it's, I've already like revamped my morning routine. I'm not looking at my phone when I first wake up in the morning. I'm getting up earlier. I'm smashing my workout, going really heavy, feeling really good you know, fueling for my workouts, having really solid post-workout meals. So it's been really good for me so far. 
Okay, so let's talk about how I'm gonna go about this. I have a, a program that has been designed by Fresa Fuerte, Lizzie. I met Lizzie in um, Tulum last January, so almost a year ago. She's a fellow petite and really strong. And we met in Tulum at this outdoor beach gym and we filmed some stuff for each other and I was just inspired by her work ethic and her physique and I know, and <laughs> you guys know me, I really believe in seeking support for these types of goals and transformations. That's why I have an entire program that involves me and it's not just a PDF. Support and accountability and someone working with you is literally the most important thing in any transformation, whether it's business transformation, personal development, fitness and health, nutrition. Anytime you wanna level up, seeking out a friend, an expert, someone like that is going to double your results. You're gonna have much, much better results. That's what I teach in my programs and that's why I have coaches in my programs and I coach in my programs as well. So practicing, uh, implementing what I teach, I have hired my own coach. I am so excited to work with Lizzie. So far she's been amazing and I knew she would. And so we have been working on program design, nutrition. I will be tracking my macros. I'm going to be lifting five days a week, so not that much has changed there, but in terms of the program design, it's changing a little bit. Definitely focusing on the compound lifts, my squat deadlift, bench press, and overhead press way more, and getting the form really tight and really perfect on that, and just going heavy. 15 reps, high volume. This is gonna be lower volume, especially on my squat, because my quads tend to blow up with the squatting but uh, deadlifts and all of the, the primary moves, uh, compound lifts, I'm going to be doing probably three to four sets, um, you know, around eight reps that's working on, it's like pretty much strength. But overall, my workouts so far have been shorter than what I'm used to doing, and we're just getting started, so I'm sure it will change. So I'm gonna continue doing the cardio I've been doing because when you start a program, the last thing you wanna do is change everything. You actually want to only change a few little things. Generally, you wanna keep your calories the same as they are while you, when you change a program so you can see how your body's reacting. A lot of times people make the mistake of starting a challenge and revamping like their whole lifestyle. Like they change everything, the time of day they work out, their nutrition, their macros, all that. You don't wanna do that. You wanna keep a food journal for a few days, figure out how many calories you're eating, and then look to improve your diet first before you change the number of calories. So that's what we're doing this week. I'm keeping my macros at my maintenance level during training days. And there's something else that I'm doing this time around. I have done this in the past. This is something that you don't need to do if you're first getting started, but in the um, essence of being transparent and showing you guys exactly how I'm doing this, I'm gonna tell you everything I'm doing so that you can learn. But again, you don't need to do this. This is something I would teach only really advanced clients because it's just not necessary to see progress. But when you've been lifting for many years, you've been an athlete, you've done a lot, you do start to want to incorporate some more complex things to keep it challenging, also for better results. So I am going to be doing carb cycling. This is something I have a lot of experience doing um, in the past. I have not done it a lot this year, but it's really effective. And essentially what carb cycling is, Padding your carbs around times when you can utilize them the most. So before and after your workout, you might have more carbohydrates in the in the form of high glycemic index foods. So these are grains, you know, pastas, quinoa, cereals, and also fruit. Um, so I am leaving those very high. Carbs are very high right now around my workouts so before and after and in general on training days I'm eating more and then I'm carb cycling by also on rest days having a little bit less carbs overall in general. So carb cycling, cycling is something I'm definitely introducing. I've always had a lot of success with it in the past and if you guys want me to make a whole different video on carb cycling alone, I can. That could be like its own video. Cardio, I'm keeping the same as before and then we're gonna slowly taper it off. I do about 15 to 20 minutes um, of the list, so low intensity steady state cardio on the treadmill, just incline walking um, four to five times a week. I do wanna kinda taper it down a bit, focus on strength and hone in on my nutrition for the fat loss. In terms of the composition of my diet, I'm keeping it high protein as I always have, and I'm going slightly higher carb than I, or I'd say a lot more higher carb than I usually do, and then I'm lowering the fats a little bit, and that's just the approach that Lizzie and I are trying first. In general, I am continuing to follow the Smolletics method and metabolism first, so the high protein, of course, 
building muscle in the gym. That's how you build your metabolism naturally. That's the approach I'm going for, lifting weights 100%, minimizing cardio. These are the pillars of the Smalletics method for petite women trying to tone up, lose fat, and get really strong. And so I'm literally just taking that and kind of pushing it to um, a more aggressive level because I do have a lot of experience. My metabolism is already pretty fast and uh, it just needs that extra little oomph. So that's why we're introducing some small changes and uh, still following the basics of really focusing on my metabolic health first. Okay, the fun part, tracking progress. So I'm somewhat of a little Google Sheet Ninja. I actually am not like good at Google Sheets. I just keep, I just use them for this stuff and I like making charts and whatever, it's fun. So of course, in my organized fashion, I am keeping um, a very, very, very accurate or I should just say like extensive document with my progress because it's gonna be so cool to share the data with you guys and I love data. I love seeing it. I think it's fun. It, it It's just cool to see your body reacting to your lifestyle changes. So here's what I'm doing. I'm tracking my macros every day in my fitness pal to hit my goals. That's the first thing I'm doing. I have a lot of experience with that so it's not gonna be too much of a difference or a challenge. I'm tracking the weights that I lift in the gym so that I know where I'm, my strength is at and I can increase it as needed as we're continuing to improve my, uh, my strength. I'm taking monthly measurements, so once a month with a little tape, I'll take waist, I'll take bicep, and um, hips, so I'll do that. I also just bought a Renfo scale, I think that's how you say it. I'm doing these daily weigh-ins with Renfo, so it's going to take my, I'll show you guys what it looks like, it's so cool. It's gonna take all my data, it's fairly accurate from day to day, so that's all that matters. Um, it's gonna take my data and basically give me my daily weight, my daily body fat percentage, my um, you know skeletal muscle slash muscle mass, so I can see these changes happening week to week, day to day. So I'm also doing a monthly progress photo. Progress photos are my favorite form to measure progress. There's so much change that you can only see from photos and really not the scale and no other place. Photos can show you a lot about how your body's reacting to something and it's really motivating because if you're consistent for four weeks or even three weeks, you'll see a change in the photos and you'll just want to keep going. So photos are always a part of it and um, I have taken my before photos on Sunday and I have them now. And then I'm also going to be uh, blogging weekly so in addition to updating you guys on YouTube I'm going to be blogging about it and launching a small edX blog I should say relaunching because I have a blog but it's really old and just don't go look at it <laughs> I'm revamping it and I'm gonna be taking you guys through what I'm eating I'll show you pictures of you know how I'm breaking my macros up it's just gonna be really fun and really cool you'll get to see exactly kind of how um, a coach or a trainer is taking charge of um, their program and it should hopefully be really useful for you guys. Okay, so now for my before check-in, the fun part. Okay, so my weight as of week one was 122.4 pounds. I have 17.8% body fat, which is still actually in the athlete category in terms of body fat percentage, but I have been down to 16, 15, and that's also very comfortable for me. I'm eating at my maintenance level of about 1,700 calories to start, and on my rest days, I'll have about 1,450 or about 1,500, and I'm working out five days a week, like I said. And then we have my before photos. And that's my check-in. That's sort of my current physique update. Um, I really cannot wait to get started. I mean, I already got started. I'm already feeling really good. I'm sure you guys can tell I'm very excited about this. I'm energized. And I just want to know from you guys, what do you want to see while I take you through this journey? Do you have any questions? Like, what is it you're most interested about so I can really hone in on that for you? Is it like the meals and the nutrition? Is it the carb cycling? Is it the programming? It is it everything? Do you want me to just take you with me through it in a day? Let me know what interests you most. And yeah, I can't wait. I'm so excited. And thanks for watching this, you guys. Let me know below what you think, what you want to see most out of this challenge. And I will talk to you guys really soon. Have an awesome day. And remember to subscribe for more content tailored to petite women. And give this video a like if you liked it. Only if you liked it. And I will talk to you guys really soon. Have a great day. Bye.